Who likes getting outside what's usual and like doing what Holy Spirit wants to do, right? Because sometimes church can get boring when all you do is just like, ah. I like my sound effects, but you all know what I'm saying, right? Okay. If I could title today's message, and I'm just going to free fall, I'm just going to free fly. I have no notes. I'm just going to go for it. You know why? Because I know God wants to give a couple points. But I feel this so heavy on my heart. And it's a joyful thing, okay? This needs to be happy. Y'all turn to your neighbor and say, yo, I'm about to get happy. Say it one more time, yo. Say it one more time, yo. Look your neighbor right in the face. Say, yo, I'm about to get happy. All right, all right. Yo. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and it's not some superficial thing. It's legit. So, listen up. If I could give you a title for this message, it would be this. God's not out to get you. God is not out to get you, okay? I think sometimes we grow up in this mindset that God, I've said this before, but he's like some messed up being. He like wants to just destroy you because you sin. If you could see how much... It hurts God when you sin. I think you'd get a whole new understanding of what sin is. It actually hurts his heart. So, I actually like reading from the Passion's translation. And uh, we're going to look at Romans chapter 5. This is something that's been uh, juicing my heart. It gets me going. And, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, (laughs) mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, we just release right now that there just be an atmosphere of joy in this room. Y'all, close your eyes. Lift up your hands with me as you close your eyes. I want y'all just to begin. We're going to spend just a little bit more time in prayer. Just a couple quick seconds. Holy Spirit, right now, we ask that I don't, I don't demand anything of you, Lord. You're in control. You want to move in this place. So I'm just coming to alignment right now with what you want to do, with what your heart wants to do. And so we release joy in this room, God. We ask that there be happiness, that there be fullness of joy, peace, right standing with you. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm going to read this for you, and it's going to go. All right. Here we go. Check this out. Our faith, y'all say our faith, faith. in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to say it one more time. Faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness. Hold up, Pastor Nick. What does that mean? What does righteousness mean? Yes. Okay, it's pure. Yeah. Being right standing with God. Right standing. You want to know how I look at it? You ready? Imagine a fire right here. All right, y'all envision a big old fire right here. You see the fire coming up? All right. This is what I, I look at righteousness as. The closer I get to that fire, the less likely I am to stay the same. Right? The closer I get to the fire, uh, if I'm not careful, I'll probably get burnt up and you know what I'm saying? It's impossible to come in contact with fire and not get changed. What do you think God is? He's an all-consuming fire. The closer you get to God, the more righteous, the more you're going to get changed into the likeness of who he is. And so that's what faith does. When we believe in Jesus, it actually brings us closer to God. And the closer we get to God, the more we realize that this world that seems to suck isn't all that there is. And I want to hone in on that, is that many times we live this life, and it's so easy, you guys, I fall into as well, it's so easy to look at this world and see how much it sucks, to be blunt. Am I the only one that thinks that? Like, look, there's death in our world. There's chaos. There's one of my best friends. He lost, his, he lost one of his sons in, in the womb, and, and he had twins, and one of them died. And then the, he's, his wife got pregnant again, and this baby now has a tumor. And they had to fly immediately out to Denver so that they can get surgery on this baby. I'm like, what is wrong? What, what's happening? And I think many times, if we're not careful, we believe that God caused that to happen. 
And God does not cause sickness. He does not cause disease. He does not cause the grief and the pain that you're going through. And that's so fundamental if we grasp this as a youth group, you guys. Because God is not a mean God. He's not a mean God. I want to lay out this picture for you. And it's like this. I want all y'all's attention, please. This is serious. We can be happy, but we have to be serious too. You know what I'm saying? So, and by the way, I heard a preacher say, he's like, this is going to be crazy. Uh, He said this. (laughs) This is crazy. God wasn't so serious before sin. What I mean by that is that the moment that we sin, that's when God was like, this is real because he treats sin. You know why he got serious? It's because the moment we sin is the moment we were separated from, from him and we couldn't have a good time anymore. Like if we could really like simplify the gospel, that's the heart behind the gospel message. God, when we sinned, we fell away from God and God was so hurt by that that he literally took his son to die for us and to bring us back. Look, and the, thing, the crazy thing is that God didn't have to die for us. He didn't have to die for us. I'm pretty sure he could have found another way to save us or whatever. Like, he didn't have to die for us. He didn't have to even and want us back. But the thing is that he wanted us and that's why he died for us. And that's, that's the whole heart of this. And so I, I say all this to get to this point, And that's this. Is that imagine, imagine having a father, a being, being a father or, or, or knowing of a father who had a son. And I, I, maybe some of us have grown up in households like this. And, and if you did, I'm really sorry. Like that's, that's not the father's heart. It's completely opposite of this. But imagine this father all he would do is beat this kid. He'd cause horrible stuff to happen to this kid day in and day out, day in and day out. He would beat this kid. And, then, and let, let's just say that he had a, a, a supernatural power to even put sickness on him and curse him. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many of y'all would think that this guy is a twisted father? All right? Imagine if... if if this father let his other friends come in and do this to his kid and beat on him and stuff like that. How many always say that's a messed up father if he allowed that to happen? I feel like sometimes that's when we look at God like, it's like he allowed, like he, maybe he causes sickness or he allows sickness. Be, and I'm like, what type of father, what, what, would that even be a good father if that happened? You know what I'm saying? It's like God isn't like that. He literally has done everything he could to keep you out of sin, to keep you out of darkness, to keep you out of sickness, to keep you out of disease. That's why Jesus came, because he didn't want to see you go through any sickness and suffering anymore. And like we isolate it sometimes, sin and sickness, like they're one and the same. The fruit of sickness and disease is sin. So look, our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us And now he declares us flawless in his sight. He declares us completely free of any sin, of any guilt. He's not out to get you. When Jesus came and died for us, he set us free because he proved God's love. And this means that we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. Our faith guarantees us permanent access into his marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop us in, in patient and in, in, through patience and endurance. How many of you guys are going through something hard in your life right now? Super troubling, and it's just messed up, and it's twisted. Did you just see what I, did you just hear what, what, what God is saying in this? Even in times of trouble, y'all say that with me, even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop us in patience and endurance. The crazy thing about God is that he doesn't cause, and I, I would even venture to say, and most people would disagree with me, and, I, and I'm, I just, I don't believe God causes or allows sickness to happen. Am, am I, 
He, he doesn't allow that to happen. But if it does happen, he can turn that to be good. Okay? What I mean, look, look. I think me explaining this is going to help you guys out comprehend what's going on in our world. Adam and Eve sinned. We all know that, right? And Pastor Michael was talking about sin, right? Everything that, every evil thing is a result of sin, all that stuff, all right? So we have the Garden of Eden, right? Eve takes a bite. He says, here you go, Adam, have some. Adam, eat some. The crazy thing is, is that when that happened, we got separated from God. And, and, and not only that, Jesus, when, when God created man, what was the first thing that he said to them? He said, be fruitful and multiply and govern over the entire earth, ruling and reigning, right? And so when that happened, God created man to be the number one authority on earth. God, in his sovereignty, allowed mankind to be the most sovereign force on earth. All right? Look, turn to your neighbor and say, you, supposed to be in control. And then point yourself and say, I am supposed to be in control. All right. I know this is crazy. Look, and this is twisted. Because if, the, if you can grasp this, the enemy can't do anything on you. I'm being dead serious. And it's not this hierarchy like, well, I can do whatever I want. You know, God, blah, blah, blah. No, it's like literally you're in alignment with God's heart. And that's what's bringing you, making you get in control of things. But check this out. When we sinned, y'all, when we fell, we literally relinquished. Y'all know what that word relinquish means? It basically means give up. He, we gave up our control over the earth and the enemy came in and set foot and he became the highest authority on this planet. I know that sounds crazy. Don't get me wrong. God's still in control. He's in control of the whole universe. But God let that happen. He didn't allow, he, like, he let us be in control of that earth. So, look, he's staying back, and he's like, the result of your sin and your darkness isn't my fault. You caused that. Yes? Like a messy room? That's a great example of a messy room. <laughs> I like I like that. That's good, Kyle. Did y'all hear what Kyle was saying? In, in equivalence to what's going on here. It's like if, you, if your parents gave you your own room and they're like, all right, I'm, they're like, Malaya, I'm just playing, I'm just picking on you. But, you know, Nick, they, they come up and say, Nick, I'm giving you this room. I want you to keep it perfect and spotless and, and, and because, because guess what happens when you don't keep it clean? Nasty bacteria and all that disgusting stuff grows and it smells nasty and you don't like it, right? You, no, none of your friends are going to come over because it's so disgusting in there. Can, is anyone in the room like that? I hope not. My brother is horrible. I, not to throw him up under the rug, but he's not here, so I can. So, your parents gave you the permission to, to do that, right? Like, they like gave you the control of that, of that room, and that's what Kyle is saying. It's, like it's similar to what God did on, on this planet. He gave us control. He's like, yo, like don't keep your room messy, because if you keep it messy, this is going to happen. But we kept earth messy by allowing sin and darkness to come in. <laughs> And destroy everything. So, saying all that, look, when we relinquish that, the enemy became the governing force over this earth. And so now, what really governs this earth is death. That's why we see all this chaos happening. As we see earthquakes. God didn't cause this earthquake to happen, you guys. No, you I believe God can cause stuff to happen. Blah, 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 blah. Look, that, that was a result of the fall of sin governing, and so death happened. Y all, are y'all tracking with what I'm saying, or no? Am I, am I just? I, I think so, yeah. Okay, good. So, through that, through the fall, it almost, we, we became dead, and it created almost like this silent planet, in a sense, and like we couldn't really communicate with God because of what happened. So we lost contact with God and we weren't able to communicate with him. We, were not, we weren't able to be able to talk with him anymore. We weren't able to have fellowship with him. And guess what happens when you don't have fellowship with him? You don't have righteousness, right? Because righteousness is right standing with God. So we lost our righteousness with God because pff, our, our, our bodies became dead to all that was happening. So Jesus came on the face, he came to the face of the planet 
as a tangible human being. Pull on your skin real quick. Pull on it. Jesus is this. He's flesh. He literally is flesh, all right? Look, he came as flesh so that we would be able to see who God is. Without Jesus, we wouldn't be able to see who God is because we were distant from him. We weren't able to see this, this, this being off in heaven. And so God came down so that we'd be able to see what he would be like in the flesh. And when he died for us, he took back the authority that the enemy had stolen. Right? Y'all track with me, okay? When he died, he was risen again. And now he's like, yo, I have the keys to govern this earth. Take that, sucker. I can't. And now, what he's doing to you today, he's handing you the keys. There's the keys, dude. Like, you can rule and reign on earth. You literally, you can rule and reign on earth. Levi, you literally have the authority to rebuke sickness and to cause heaven to come to earth. Everyone here has that authority, not because of what you've done, but because of the righteousness that Jesus has given you. And so I say all this to say that the biggest lie that the enemy propagates in our day and age is that God is not good. That he's not good. That's the biggest thing that he's going to, it's not about LGBT matter, LGBTQ, whatever the lingo is now, the, the, that thing that just keeps trailing more things onto the end of LGBT, you know. But it's not about if, if it's right or wrong to be gay. It's not about if, if black lives matter. It's not about is abortion, look. Really, that root issue of every argument that we're facing is if God is good or not. Because if God was good, we'd understand his ways, right? We'd want to understand his ways and we'd recognize that being in a same-sex relationship is not good for us. Because God is good. He gets to decide what's good and not, what's not good. And in fact, if we're in that relationship, then we're going to reap the consequences, consequences of sin and darkness. Is that, does that make sense? Abortion is not good. You know why? Because it's opposite of what God commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. The biggest question isn't if, that's, if it's all that, it's is God good or not? If we understood that God is good, we'd believe that everything he says is good. I think maybe earlier I phrased that a little bit wrong or whatever, but that, that's my heart behind it, is that God is always good, and if we were to understand that, we'd recognize it. And that's the biggest lie the enemy wants to say in this day and age. And he even likes to play the blame game. The enemy loves to, to accuse people and to blame them, and he also likes to accuse God of doing stuff. And I just think it's so dumb, is that here is this enemy that is in control of the entire planet and he's causing all this death and chaos and yet he's whispering in your ear, the reason why your mom is sick is because God hates you and he's left you. The reason why your parents are getting divorced is because God has left you and he has hate, hated you. The reason why your dad treats you like that is because God has left you and he hates you. Does that ever, am I the only one that ever thinks that before? Right? The enemy is so subtle in his way, and he wants us to blame God for it. And before we know it, we get into this whole mindset that God is out to get me. He's out to get me. But he's not. He sent his son to get you. That's the only thing that God's out to get you with this is love. He literally, no shadow, you won't light up mountain, you won't climb up, you're coming after me. Right? Are y'all tracking with me or no? If I can sum up all what, what I'm trying to say here, is that the suffering that you're going through, God did not cause it and he did not, he did not put that to you. Okay? As simple as it is, God did not cause that. Maybe you caused it. Let's be real. Maybe it was the result of someone else's choices that caused suffering in your life. Uh, many of us, I don't know about many of us, but I know there's probably some people in this room as, that's been abused in the past. And I'm like, my heart goes out for you. I, I, that is messed up. God didn't cause that to happen, but it was that person's choice that allowed that to happen into your life. Right? Because a couple minutes ago we said, you're in control, right? That means that your next door neighbor is in control. The, what, what they, the actions they do affect this whole atmosphere around us. And it, I think you all know what I'm saying. So 
that's all I got tonight, y'all. I just, I, want, I just wanted to get that straight. I want to get off my chest. God's not out to get you. He caused his son to come. And if there's one other thing I want to say is that God feels what you feel. It's easy for me to be right here and to say all this true, all this facts and information, and yet be distant from the emotions and the things that you're feeling. And I know every one of us has gone through crazy stuff in your life, and, and it's hard for me to even feel what you've gone through. I, and I, that's why it's so important. I want to feel what God heart feels when, when He sees you. And look, I believe one of the, one of the reasons why God, why Jesus died for us is because He wanted to feel what you were feeling. Jesus, it was, I'm not, it was hard for him to do that. It was hard for him to, to take this and to bear his own cross. But I know that, and that he wanted to feel what you're going through because when you've gone through something and, and you're able to talk to someone else, like Megan earlier, with that, that she dealt with depression and, and self-harm and all this stuff, it's easier to, to, to talk to somebody that's gone through the same stuff that you've gone through, Right? God is in a distant God. He felt the very thing that you feel, that loneliness, that desertion that you feel that when your parents leave you. Like, he feels that because he was left behind. Like, he feels what you're going through. One of our students in pre-service prayer had a, had a word of knowledge, and he, she saw this girl that was in a pit, this deep sand, and she was getting sucked into it. And she saw God reaching out, and, and she was about to go all the way in, and he reaches out, and he pulls her out of the quicksand. <laughs> and she said that because of that, God and that individual was closer than ever before. And I, so I say that to say this. Maybe some of you guys are stuck in that quicksand and, 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 that, and that thing, and you just feel like you just keep getting pulled under and under and under and under again. And I don't know what it is. Maybe you, you, you're dealing with, with, with depression. Maybe you're dealing with friends making fun of you. Maybe you're dealing with, like, when you feel like no one loves you. Maybe you're, it's lust. Maybe it's greed. What, who names it? You, you, you know what you're going through. And whatever it is, maybe you feel like you keep going through that. But God's right there, and he's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. And he's right there. He's reaching down and pulling you out of that. And the crazy thing is, is that once you get out of it, you and God are going to be closer than ever before. You and him are going to be more righteous than ever before. Look. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and now he declares us flawless in his sight. When he reaches out and pulls you out of that, that, that quicksand, he's coming in, and you guys are going to be more closer than ever before, and you're going to be changed. You're going to be flawless, flawless in his sight. So I want y'all to, to just, everyone right here, bow your heads, y'all. We're about to get real. God is wanting to nip some stuff in the bud tonight, and I'm about to get serious and like a little bit more intense than I usually am. Because I'm tired of the enemy messing with this youth group and causing sickness and causing chaos in their lives. Kurotara da bakira